Okay, so here's a 2025 or 2024 Hyundai Ionic 5 Limited rear wheel drive, heat pump, electric vehicle. Let's follow this circuit. I've never read anything about this one. I don't know this model. So we got a, a pump. We got an AC compressor right here. Now we can pretty well look at it and guess we got the inverter here. So we'll have our couple hundred volts right there. It's only two wire. Yep, two wire coming into the inverter. That'll change it to three phase to drive the electric motor. We see the small pipe. So we know this is gonna be hot discharge gas right here. We got the large pipe. So we know this is gonna be our suction line come here. Now this is how they're handling their system without all the cockamamie thing with multiple expansion valves and, and diverter solenoids and all that bullshit. So let's get this straight. It's cold. You're in Tahoe. You're in Florida, or not Florida. You're in you're in North Dakota, and it's cold. You want heat, so they start up the AC and the discharge. Let's follow this discharge because remember, there's no hot coolant because this is not a gasoline engine. So that goes through the muffler, big muffler too. We follow this down here. Here's my fingers. I'm grabbing this. I'm following it around. Here's my hand right here. We're coming up here and we're going into the dash and you go yeah no big deal they all go into the dash but what do you see look at the size of this line look at the size of this line they're both identical what's that mean basically no pressure drop but we are going to get rid of heat why are we going to get rid of heat because the customer wants heat so there's a evaporator we're not going to call these evaporators we're going to say it's a heat exchanger there's a heat exchanger in there giving off heat because that is now, you can think of that as the condenser, that heat exchanger in there, and it's blowing hot air on your face instantly. As soon as that electric compressor starts up, it makes heat, and you got instant heat in an electrical vehicle on a hot day. Let's follow the circuit. We're coming back under here. Let's follow this. Come on, come on, where are we going? Look what, look what we're coming to. Plate heat exchanger. Let's follow the circuit, keep following it. It goes underneath and I think it just lips around. See that little bolt right there? The, the pipe just goes around and comes out and it goes in to there. So that hot gas will go be going in this direction through every other one of these little plates. What do you see here? Coolant, glycol, coolant, glycol. Okay, this you can say is your condenser. This is a heat exchanger, a plate heat exchanger, but let's call this the main condenser because there is no main condenser because what do you see here you see something that looks like a radiator and then you see something that looks like the condenser but it's small we'll get back to that let's stick to this so pretend this is your main condenser that's in the front of your car what do you see sticking off the side of it remember the receiver dryer doesn't that look awfully a lot like receiver dryer okay so now you did all your condensing you flashed your gas you got rid of your heat because the heat went from look at this you see what my hands hitting right here your heat went there let's follow the other one here we go over there so these two lines go into the plate heat exchanger right there and that hot gas right out from after it went through it rejected a lot of its heat to the passenger compartment it came all over here it got rid of some of the heat was absorbed by the coolant, the glycol here, then it comes off into this chamber here. It'll be like your receiver dryer. It'll drop down here. Then let's follow this down here. Slightly bigger tube. Let's say this is a number eight. So we follow that. It comes up right here. So we have this number eight and the number eight is dropping into a number six. The number six is coming down here. Now we got this little mini condenser right here. Think of this as a sub cooler because it already went through a receiver dryer, right? So it comes into here, supposedly mostly liquid, and it's gonna pass over here. It's gonna come down and drop into the other tubes down here, and it's gonna come across here like this. Now it's coming out as a subcooled liquid. Now it's making its return path. You notice for a supposedly heat pump system, there's no, we haven't got no solenoids or no re for reversing valves. 
Uh, for you guys in in residential, commercial, they don't use three-way valves or switching valves or anything like that in automotive. They use a whole bunch of electric solenoids. There are a bunch of dickwads in our automotive engineering. It's a, it's a clusterfuck. Uh, so we come down here. We keep coming here. Now look right here. We have an internal heat exchanger. You see that her internal heat? So you see that large line right there that came out of that sub-cooled liquid from that little condenser? You see this big return right here, suction line? And you see it's a pipe over a pipe, so we're exchanging heat to the subcooler. There we go, and look what we have here. We have a T. So we have one line is going up, and one line is continuing in the back. Let's ignore the one line going up. Think of this as a rear evaporator in the rear of a vehicle, say a Toyota Sienna. This is a rear evaporator, but what it is is a glycol plate heat exchanger, but we're gonna call this a rear evaporator. Let's keep it simple. Okay, so we keep going straight right through that little Y right there. We come out the back, we come over here, we go up and we hit an expansion valve. This is the only place we have a solenoid. It's not an electronics expansion valve, that's on or off. So we go on or off and now we open up summertime it'll let the flow go through the expansion valve and it'll cool that plate heat not plate heat it'll cool that evaporator but we're going to call it a heat exchanger let's get rid of these names let's go uh heat exchanger heat exchanger okay so this plate heat exchanger right here same thing we got coolant did you see where that goes from this little t and it goes right into there subcooled liquid I'm trying to follow it. Ah, here, here goes our metering device. Okay, now I think my hands might be on, I'm seeing how big this is, that big control solenoid. And I think it's not, I think this might be an electronic expansion valve right here. And then it's metering into the plate heat exchanger. So this is our electronic expansion valve that meters into this plate heating it. Unless it's a solenoid, I'm not sure, and it has sensors in it. How many wires do we have over here? Um, I can't tell. Maybe more than two, I can't tell. So here's your other plate heat exchanger. Here's your glycol, and we're doing the same thing again. And it's coming into a T, into the big fat section line that comes from the front heat exchanger, AKA evaporator, and or it drops down into the return suction line that goes through the internal heat exchanger on the pipe right here for subcooling and it makes its trip all the way back to the compressor so like some of the abortions you see that might have two or three electronic expansion valves and or mechanical expansion valves with multiple solenoids all over the place those kind of clusterfuck messes this is a real simplistic way of getting heating or cooling without so much shit in the way uh, it would be now here's what i would do if i wanted to be hillbilly backyard make my own heat pump i would go to um a little old uh split system or an old style mini split that was mechanical not vfd not variable and uh, you get the three-way valve out of it and you do your own piping here and you can do your own three-way single valve by a simple 12 volts or 24 volt solenoid you could get 12 ones so you can convert it and do the hot gas switching using a regular solenoid and you can even have it going off to a hot plate this stuff you could build at home uh things could be changed out and replaced with a little bit of pipe work and a little bit of basic knowledge but um yeah, i wonder what the price of that sucker is but that's how this work that's how the simple system, this is a very, very simple system. This is one of the simplest, easiest to get to uh, heat pump systems that I've seen so far. All right, I'll see you guys later.